Hello, and welcome to another show and tell, um, not lesson, I remembered then, a show and tell. Um, weird and wonderful instruments. I mentioned, uh, we've looked, so so far we've looked at a, um, a tumbi, an in Indian instrument, and a cigar box guitar, both single string instruments. I mentioned the lute, uh, the Renaissance lute, um, last time, and uh, I would show you a, a Renaissance lute. Um, I've got two, in fact, and the one I've got here, as you can see, look, can you see? There's a fret missing. These are all tied on frets. There's a fret missing, and there's a snap string, so I won't be showing that today, but I'll just give you a little taster. This is what a, a Renaissance lute looks like. There you are. Beautiful, isn't it? Actually made by a local maker um, based in uh, Merthyr Vale. Um, so, uh, but what I will show you today, oh, and I will just mention that I play with an early music consort. We play lots of medieval, Renaissance and Baroque music. Um, and they were very lucky in that they were um, given a grant by the uh, the Arts Council of Wales uh, years ago to buy lots of musical instruments, uh, one of which is one of these lutes. Um, and the instrument I'm going to show you now, the other weird and wonderful instrument. Ready? Oitin Barod? Here it is. So take off the 21st century plectrum. Um, so, any guesses as to this instrument? What on earth is it? Sorry, what did you say? Silence again. Um, so a closer look. It's a sit-in. It's a Renaissance sit-in. I keep saying the word Renaissance, don't I? That's because that's the, the time when these instruments were first uh, developed, invented. So let's say Tudor times for those of you who went to primary school and looked at the Tudors, you know, Henry VIII, Elizabeth I and all that. Um, so this uh, is a Renaissance sit-in. This is my favourite instrument owned by this consort that I play with because it's just gorgeous, isn't it? It's the, you know, it has the same, let's just say, features of a stringed instrument. Uh, very, very shallow um, uh, sound box. Uh, sound hole is not really a sound hole, it's a rosette. Uh, it's quite common in those times. We've got a fingerboard with built-in frets, uh, various uh, tuning pegs for the strings. So we've got a bridge. Uh, it's kind of all tied on at the end. You can see the a bit like a banjo. The strings are actually tied on really, um, uh, and that's it really. Uh, and we have the addition of scary jester stroke clown head at the end. Yeah, something to scare the kids with. I always say that. Um, there we are. It's the only actual um, wire stringed instrument that was out at that time. If I compare that with the lute, <coughs> I know it has not many strings, but these were kind of um, originally cat gut. Not really, they didn't, gut cats to make strings. Um, probably like pig pig gut, which is just as gross. Uh, this, these are Nile gut, you know, like synthetic versions of that, but um, not metal, whereas this is the only metal stringed instrument, or one of the, one of the few from that time. It has its own tuning. Uh, it's usually played from tablature, a bit like the lute. So it's not really played from notation, it's played from tablature, unless you want to kind of read chords from 
notation and play a kind of form of uh, continuer. Uh, what else can I say about this instrument? Oh yeah, it's, so it's double stringed. So these are wire strings, doubled, except for the third course. We call these courses because they're kind of doubled. Uh, it's the same with the lute, you call it a course of strings. Can you see? It's actually three, three strings. These are all, and these are brass. Yeah, odd, isn't it really? So mainly wire strung, except for the third course. It's made from brass. Anyway, there we are. It's a bit more of a raucous sounding instrument, although some of the music written for it is actually a bit more kind of um, artful, let's say. But it was quite often used in barber shops. And gentlemen would come in and have their hair cut, beards trimmed, you know, those kind of pointy, you know, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of Sir Francis Drake type beards. Um, and while waiting, in the queue, uh, there would be a, a sit-in just kind of sat in the corner uh, and they would pick it up and strum away as they were waiting. There we are. Yeah. Bit of history there. Um, I saw a, a few of these in a, um, an instrument museum in Vienna. Um, and they seem to be the most expensive or the most valuable instruments in the, in the museum because they were kind of in their own kind of glass case. Um, yeah, I, I hate to think how much this is worth, but it's an absolutely gorgeous instrument, don't you think? There we are. That's the sittern. Uh, I've got a couple of um, videos to show you of me playing this instrument, playing a couple of pieces. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy them, and I will see you in the next um, edition of Weird and Wonderful Instruments. Bye.